In the 1970s, whole areas of New York City were completely leveled by fire. Yet during this time, the New York Fire Department closed 33 firefighting units. One firehouse closed was Engine Company 212 in the north side area of Brooklyn. This is the story of how the North Siders organized a two and a half year campaign to reopen what became known as the People's Firehouse. Northside is home to 12,000 people, including Italians, Asian Americans, and Puerto Ricans. But the majority of Northsiders are Polish Americans. They enjoy their culture and traditions, and they work to keep them alive. In the very early part of 1900, I would say, she came from Poland. All she knew was how to do was to work. With most of the Polish people, the first job that they ever got, they got a job in Jutna because there was enough for factory work in our neighborhood to stay in. We didn't have the education to get further ourselves in any other way other than with our hands a common sense. The north side is on the East River in Brooklyn, just across from the Manhattan skyline. Residents have lived side by side with warehouses and small factories for over 100 years. I'm only here 73 years <laughs> in the neighborhood, and this was a nice community all the time. And the politicians are trying to break it up. In the last 30 years, Northsiders have seen neighbors evicted from their homes for industrial expansion along with severe cuts in police protection, sanitation service, fire protection, health care, and education. As a result, the neighborhood has deteriorated, forcing more and more people to move out. This has made the area available at low cost for industrial development. This process of forcing people out of neighborhoods is called planned shrinkage. All they want to do is just let this area collapse completely, and then they'll take over at a nice right. cheap price, and build up what they need. In 1973, the SNS Box Company wanted to evict the residents of a whole block of homes so that their houses could be demolished for a factory expansion. Even though the North Side has battled to save their homes, the city government sided with the company. Police were sent in and the residents were forcibly evicted. We have nothing whatsoever to do. We fought for three and a half years, but in the end, the marshals came in and bodily threw us out. I lost my home, and so did the others. From that day on, I swore I would fight the city. With whatever they took away from me, I wanted back. In addition to being bulldozed out, many people were burned out by the closing of six fire companies in the north side Greenpoint area since 1959. In that year, Engine Company 213 was closed. The Noble Street Marine Company was closed in 1962. In 1968, Squad 7 was closed. Engine Company 215 was closed in 1972. And three years later, the 36th Battalion was closed. 
1975, the city announced the closing of Engine Company 212. The North Siders knew that if Engine Company 212 closed, it could mean the end of the neighborhood. More than half of the North Siders are senior citizens, one of the groups most likely to be killed or injured in fires. I told him I was going to dance with him. They didn't have to travel far to see the end result of planned shrinkage. Bushwick, a neighboring community, was prosperous until fire protection was cut just a few years ago. Since then, whole blocks of Bushwick have been destroyed by fire. So when the city attempted to close Engine Company 212, the Northsiders decided to do something about it. We just stayed, stood up in front of the engine, and we said, no, no, you don't go. No, no, you don't go. And we did not permit the fire engine from moving out of that place. We blocked it off because we felt that the minute they moved that out, it would never come back. 300 angry residents blocked the engine company in its quarters and held the firemen hostage. After 24 hours, the firemen were released. But the community people had taken over the firehouse. They were determined not to leave until the city met their demand to reopen Engine Company 212. And from that night on, until uh, we got to reopen, people were manning it 24 hours a day, living in there, sleeping in there. How, how long did you live there? I think I lived there, I don't know how many Nine months. Nine, ten months, but I saw. Oh, yeah. You were there until about May or June. Once inside the firehouse, the first step was to figure out a plan of action. Kind of Neighbors who had hardly spoken to each other before found themselves sitting face to face. They knew that as individuals they didn't have a chance, but together they were a force the city couldn't ignore. And when the police came, they, you know, they jumped in and they says, you gotta get out, you gotta get out. And this uh, the battalion chief of the 11th Division, uh, Joe Galvin, he came down, you know, because he was notified, he shot down. And he came in and he says, what's happening? So we said, we're taking over the fire. He, so the cop says, what do you want us to do? Throw these civilians out? So he says, no. He says, leave them here. It's, it's the people's firehouse. And that's what we got to do. A people's firehouse began having weekly meetings on Tuesday nights called action committee meetings. These were open to anyone who wanted to help reopen engine company 212. We used to actually like, stay in the firehouse there every night, and we had a kitchen in the back room. And during the winter, that place became a little bit dreary, except for that back room, because we had a little bit more light in there. We had a radiator, we had a stove, a TV set. And the people used to congregate back there in the evenings, and we used to talk and play cards and listen to the radio. And our talking was educating ourselves. Now, we got to the point where any one of us could actually stand up and argue with somebody about the fire department. And since we were getting publicity left and right, we figured we can't let this go. So we started responding to the cause. Not to fight fires, because we realized we couldn't fight fires. We were just civilians who were old men, young people, kids. Uh, we couldn't do it. It was, it was something stupid to attempt to fight a fire. But we showed up at the fires. And that they first. We got their first sometimes. Yeah. And uh, we would let them know about it. And we really tested the fire department, blah, 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 blah. There was a fire here. If engine company 212 was in existence, they would have gotten there four minutes. So we had to wait 12 minutes for an engine. Uh, we recorded times when it took 23 to 25 minutes for a vehicle to show up. We had this on writing. We followed the, the boxes and the bells. We learned how to read them. And again, it gave us more education to how they operated. They gave us more credibility with the people in the neighborhood and the fire department saw we weren't giving up. Fires which Engine Company 212 would have responded to began breaking out in the neighborhood, burning out of control while other engine companies from further away had to respond. While the firehouse was closed, eight people died in fires in the north side. Homes and factories were lost to fire. People were scared and they were angry. They realized they had to take their fight to the city itself. So they began demonstrating throughout the city and even went to the homes of politicians, dumping ashes from their fires. Still later, their anger boiled over and they set fires of their own, burning city politicians in effigy.
because of press coverage and the upcoming city elections, City Hall was forced to begin negotiations with the People's Firehouse. But the city still hoped to defeat the community. A member of the local democratic machine came to the firehouse and tried to divide the community with an old scare tactic. He said the firehouse was infiltrated by communists. I asked for the floor. You said after Adam, I'd have the floor before Vic. No, no, no. the floor. Sit down. Everybody calm down. Oh, Lord. Oh, Father, why did you leave me? Why am I hanging on the clock? people that don't belong in this community. This isn't a community. This is a communist the way we want, not the way some board wants to dictate to us. We all should be grateful for all the good people that help us, or in any kind of support we get, like James, Adam, Ron, Chris, all the good people here deserve a good hand of applause. <laughs> After 16 months of confrontation and negotiation, the People's Firehouse members accepted an offer from the city. The firehouse would be reopened with a newly created outfit called Utility Unit 1. Mayor Abraham Beam has asked me to say on his behalf that he is, uh, he is very gratified that we've been able to respond to the concerns of the people of Northside and we hope that the solution that we have come up with will lay your concerns to rest and that we can have a fruitful relationship between the people in Northside and ourselves. Now we're going to have the signing of that contract and we hope to God that this one goes true. To resolve the dispute that has resulted from the closing of Engine Company 212 and condition upon approximately 20 cedar lines being made available for use of the fire department, it is agreed as follows. First, Although the community was glad to be getting fire protection, they were still skeptical. To be known as a utility unit. Uh, we have made an agreement with the city, uh, with the uh, people of the community, that we intend to abide by, and that's the way the firehouse is going to open. I don't trust the city. They have it. I know it's down in paper. I know it's there. I know it's signed. But you know what I, you can do with that paper? Rip it up and use it as toilet paper. Because I've been through the city since 1969, and I find out they lie. What will they have to give up for that? Uh, I don't think they're giving up anything. I think it, it's not a case of giving up. It's, it's uh, a case of everybody benefiting and uh, a restoration uh, of uh, community confidence and the ability of the city to uh, care for the people. They want to take away 20 cedar workers from the whole coalition, which means 20 people will lose their jobs. And that money will go into this firehouse. Why do they have to do this? Well, it was a very complicated situation. And uh, we had to say, by the people, and I think we did. What the hell have they got all these high-priced professional people running the city if this is the only easy way they can come up with? Once the utility unit was installed, things began to return to normal. The 
the people could finally move out of the firehouse. And Adam Vineski, one of the firehouse organizers, was given the Polish American Citizen of the Year Award. Uh, the city, we try to explain to Commissioner O'Hagan and the mayor that you couldn't take a company from another area to pay another area off. And they could never see that. And we were fighting that for about a year with meetings and protests. And we won one. We lost one. We uh, blocked the Brooklyn Queens Expressway one day at 7.30 in the morning, 18 miles, both ways. <laughs> we did lose eight people in fires of the north side. I, if it wasn't for some of these people that are dead now, that supported us, and we lost many homes, and I lived in a wooden frame homes where we lost a house right across the street from us. It was a, a terrible sight. Some of the Polish people in that area have never seen a fire like that. And that's what really got us together. Many of you people lived in the north side once, and maybe your mothers and fathers are still living there. My father was born there, I was born there, and my children are living there. It's a community that's not going to die. We proved it to the city. I told the city over and over again, the longer you keep us there, the stronger we're going to get. And I thank everyone for this honor. First time I ever got anything. <laughs> and I'll hang this up. I'll bring it to the people of the north side. I thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you. Adam and the other north siders knew that the opening of the utility unit did not mean the end of the people's firehouse. They renovated an abandoned storefront across the street and continued to meet every Tuesday night. There were many other problems in the neighborhood they wanted to work on, and they knew they had to keep a watchful eye on the new utility unit. In a few weeks, the people discovered the city had lied to them again. We're having an all-night vigil uh, to more or less try to embarrass the fire department into using this unit. I mean, you know, like we spent 15 months occupying a firehouse so that we could get some form of fire protection. This utility unit certainly isn't an engine company, and an engine company is what we want. Uh, they've allocated enough uh, money and manpower here to operate an engine company, but for, uh, I guess, nothing more than political considerations, we had to accept this half a loaf where they only go to half the boxes in the neighborhood. The utility unit only responded to fires in a six-block radius, leaving much of the north side unprotected. There were some fires just a few blocks away, and the utility unit sat in the firehouse while other fire companies from different areas had to respond. So the People's Firehouse continued their fight for another 15 months, pressuring public officials at every opportunity. We had day-to-day battles. Even if we weren't going down to City Hall, we were accumulating information for the next day. And everybody was fully informed. This is what kept the people together. Well, we lost the police precinct. There was a small battle conducted totally within the system. We lost that fight. When SNS took houses away, it was a larger battle, fought mostly within the system, partially outside of it. We won half the battle. When it came down to the firehouse, it was fought completely and totally outside the system. Let's face it, once we did that and won, all hell broke loose. We started getting headaches, but it's worth it. And anything that I have to say as anybody else is if you have any kind of a battle going on, no matter what it is, forget the channels, forget the bureaucracy. Go out and educate yourself. If you're fighting to save a police precinct, go out and learn the operations of the police department. If you're fighting to save the school, learn the operations of the educated, of the education system. Because education is your best weapon. They are afraid of people who are educated. They are definitely afraid of people who do not need the system. City Hall finally gave in to the North Side's determination. Engine Company 212 was fully restored. What I would like to do at this point is introduce somebody to you, Chief Adam Vineski. Today is the day. We waited, we fought, we sacrificed, 
And we got it. We got the whole thing. <laughs> We're bringing our point to the whole United States that you can fight and you can win. And you got to keep up fighting. the way and we proved it here in the north side a little community like this proved it and i hope we stick together we really fight on and get this neighborhood back the way it was years ago well, this is a wonderful sight we're here today smiling Remember two and a half years ago, when people gathered here, they were angry. Very angry. They were closing our firehouse. <laughs> yeah, you can cry. <laughs> we have here today a happy crowd of people. And it just proves that people will come to a happy occasion. Since we were told that the fire department is coming back, our engine company, George Wolf, is coming back. The homes are being re, uh, re, 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 re renovated. You can look around and see homes being painted and, and fixed up again. Before that, they were deteriorating. They were falling apart. People are starting to realize that the neighborhood is coming back to its own. Thank you. I just want to join and congratulate the community and the city for coming to an agreement. I'm glad to be part of it. I'm glad to lead this company and we'll give you the best service that you can get. The People's Firehouse had proven that you can fight City Hall and win. They celebrated their victory with the community marching in the Pulaski Day Parade.